Have you ever wondered if it's possible to live in sync with your cycle? Do you struggle with a negative mindset around your period? Are you wondering if it's possible to be feminist and anti-birth control? We're going to explore these questions and so much more in the Managing Your Fertility podcast, because this is about helping you live a whole and full life. I'm your host and guide, Bridget Busacker, joining you in this journey of exploration related to women's health care, feminism, and fertility awareness. Are you ready? Let's get started. Mairead, welcome to the show. I am so excited to have you on as part of the Method series conversations that we're doing and talking about FEM. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you, Bridget. It's always fun to talk with you. Before we jump into this interview, I'm going to introduce Mairead for our listeners. For those who have um, not heard of her, not heard of her work, Mairead Sudhoff is a certified athletic trainer and a certified femme instructor. She thrives in inspiring women to chart their cycles. Her business, Lumina Health Services, teaches women how to chart for health, body literacy, cycle syncing, and family planning. Her background in sports medicine makes her particularly passionate about helping active women achieve cycle health and sync their workouts to the phases of their cycle. So Marie, can you tell us a bit more about your story and why you became an instructor for Fem Health before we get into the specifics of Fem? Yes, absolutely. So I was a quote unquote late bloomer and I struggled a lot with period issues through high school and then my early years of college. And I am also a cradle Catholic and I was aware of NFP and charting as a tool that you could use for family planning, but there never really was this conversation around using your cycle and your cycle data as a tool for health and kind of managing, you know, your symptoms and figuring out what was going on. So when I started dealing with irregular cycles, painful periods, and all of these issues, I was desperately looking for answers. And I'm in college studying for my athletic training degree and literally looking through like scores and scores of internet, you know, blog posts on the internet and um, looking up YouTube videos and trying to look through my own like anatomy and physiology textbooks and these kinds of things to find answers. And everything ranged from you know, the regular 28 day textbook cycle, this is what you should expect. This is what's normal to like varying degrees of this is what could be wrong with you. You could have PCOS, you could have endometriosis, you could have cancer (laughs) Um, to then like, you know, you're a divine goddess who should cycle with the moon. And this is how you can tune into your body. But there wasn't any like straightforward information out there um, that really helped women to just like dive into the basic science and understand what their cycle data means. And so when the organization that I'm certified through FEM came to speak at the school, I was already very interested in a lot of this content, a lot of this women's health um, content that, you know, I was searching through for answers. And I saw that they were coming to talk on a few different panels. Actually, this happened over the course of two or three years. And each talk that they came and presented at, I was very eager to go to. So they came and spoke on a number of different panels that had to do with healthcare and the dignity of the human person and all of these, um, you know, topics that are related to women's health and to healthcare in general. And then one of the last times that they came back and spoke while I was at school, they actually came and did an introductory class to charting and using the FEM method for charting. And I was like, I am on this. I'm so excited to go. Like, I absolutely need to know this information. I went to the talk and I was just so excited to have like a foundation and a basic, easy to approach understanding of charting and using my cycle data. But I had already also at that point been doing so much of my own research that I was kind of um, disappointed because I was like, it was just an introductory talk and I wanted more. So they actually came back then a few months later and I had a friend who knew that I was very interested in this content. And they came back a few months later to do an intensive training for their teacher certification program. Start out with a weekend to get you, you know, dive into the program, dive into the content, and then you would complete the rest of it online. And my friend who was a nursing major told me about the program. And she's like, I know you're interested in this, you know, um, just so you know, they're coming back for this 
this intensive weekend to just start the teacher certification course, if you would like to sign up. And I was like, uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I would. So without any hesitation, I just jumped right into the teacher certification program and did their intensive weekend and then finished all of that online. And it's really the rest is history. As they say, I have been very passionate about this ever since I started learning about it. And very passionate about the method that I use and um, just the simplicity and the straightforwardness of it. And the fact that it is really focused on using your cycle as a healthcare tool. Right. This is so awesome. And I love that it's your story and your own personal experiences that led to your discovery of femme and your passion to help other women too, because I think that is so often what I what I see in here, it usually comes from our own experiences where we're learning for ourselves and then realizing and having that passion and fire lit within where it's like, wow, so many more women need to know this. Every woman needs to know this and have this information available. And I just love that you've taken the the next steps to start a business and to help women and instruct women in this method and helping them feel empowered by their cycles and their bodies so that they're not you know, wondering what the heck is going on and not getting answers to questions or not having someone to talk to and realizing it's very normal to have questions and to recognize signs and symptoms of our overall reproductive health and that it's good to ask questions. It's so much better to find answers to those questions or at least begin that process of searching for answers than just turning off our body through hormonal contraception or, you know, hearing such a common thought process from doctors of like, well, okay, if you take hormonal birth control, since you don't want kids right now, that is the best option for you. Um, so I think that's just really amazing that the work that you're doing and, and how you got here. So can you tell us what, what is FEM and just context for who they are and how they work? Yes, absolutely. So FEM is an acronym and it stands for fertility education and medical management. And one of the reasons, as I, as I said, that I love this program so much is because they have a heavy focus on charting for health primarily. So they really see your cycle data and your charts as a healthcare tool, as something that can be used to evaluate and diagnose, and then also help guide treatment plans. So they have this two-pronged approach then to women's health, and their whole program is really based on this approach of number one, they have their fertility education, and that would be women and men alike also, who are teachers, who are educated in really the science of, you know, cycle data and how to track. And they're the ones who are going out and, you know, sharing this information with women and couples and informing them of, you know, how they can use their cycle data, how they can track what's normal, what's not, and then what they need to do in order to um, restore normal cycle function. And then the medical management side of things they have actually partnered with um, a research institute that's based in Santiago, Chile. And they use a lot of their data that they're constantly getting new data based in women's health and you know, endocrinology, endocrinology and um, gynecology, all of these pieces of data that inform their medical management protocols. And they train physicians, PAs, um, nurse practitioners, essentially anybody with prescriptive authority can go through their program and become certified in their medical management protocols. So then they're able to take this data, take these charts, because that's one of the first things that they're going to use, your cycle data. They're able to analyze that and then move forward with other evaluations and um, come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan based on what they find. So it's a much more sensitive uh, standard of care than what you see in a typical ob office. Um, and it really helps to not only inform women of, you know, what are they seeing on their own, what's normal, what's not, but then also what are your options based off of that? And kind of like what you're saying, so many people don't get those options elsewhere. They don't get full informed consent and they don't get you know, all of the tools that we actually do have available in modern medicine to help them come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan and help them get to the root cause of their issues. And FEM is one of those organizations that is really pushing boundaries and really trying to make waves in the women's health space and change how we approach women's health. And I love it. And I'm here for it all the way. 
That's so exciting. I just, I'm, I'm really grateful for you giving some background of how FEM works because I think that's so helpful for those listening as they're trying to figure out, you know, what method resonates for them. And I think always having an understanding of how methods are developed and where they come from and what their mission and vision is, is, is really helpful in narrowing down like, wow, okay, I, this is what I need. This is what I'm intrigued by. This sounds like a good fit for me. So it's really helpful yeah. to have that context. Um, what method does FEM fall under? Is it cervical fluid, symptothermal, mucus only? Yeah, they are considered a symptohormonal method because they incorporate LH testing and cervical mucus as their two primary biomarkers. But it is a very flexible method. So there are some women, especially as they're getting started, you can use it um, as a cervical mucus only method if you'd like that approach, want to keep it very simple. Um, But then you also have the option, if you'd like, to incorporate additional biomarkers as well. So they encourage if you want to add in basal body temperature, for instance, that BBT, or if you want to include something like progesterone testing, that's totally up to you and is going to be supported by the majority of instructors. But at its core, it is a symptom hormonal with the LH and cervical mucus. Okay. That's awesome. So how does it work as far as someone is, you know, reaches out to you, starts working with them? Like, what does it look like to start? And again, as a reminder for those who are listening, these podcasts are not intended for you to be able to do any of these methods on your own. This is really to give context for how the method works, answer commonly asked questions and making sure you are working with an instructor. So we'll get to specifics of that, but I just want to add that caveat in here and that clarification for those who are listening. Um, but it helps to have context Marie, from you just to better understand, like, what would it look like for someone who wants to start charting? What are they, what's a, what's a day in the life of a charter look like when using them? Yeah, absolutely. So if they're coming through my program, um, I have it set up now so people can go through a lot of the content on their own because I was dealing with trying to put together group classes and even some one-on-ones with crazy time zones, differing work schedules, childcare, all of that, and finding that I ended up sending out a lot of recorded presentations to people who couldn't make some of these classes. So I have put together since then um, all the presentations, all the material that people can work through on their own, and then they connect with me privately for follow-ups. So you're watching these these presentations, these videos, going through a lot of um, homework and handouts, and then coming to me for one-on-one follow-ups. So that way we can make sure that you know you're um, digesting all of the material and you're able to to utilize it and chart properly and appropriately depending on your goals and what you might be dealing with, whether that's you know some sort of um, hormonal imbalance or, you know, trying to come up with a diagnosis or needing medical support, or just even if you're in a confusing transition phase, like postpartum or, um, you know, coming off of the pill. So it's very flexible when you're working with me, for instance, Um, every instructor is going to be a little bit different with how they approach teaching. Some people do just like to do one-on-ones, private one-on-ones. Other people will do group classes. And then there are other instructors like me who will send out their pre-recorded info and then connect one-on-one privately to support you in those chart reviews. Um, But when you're charting with FEM daily, it's just going to look very similar to a lot of other methods. You're observing your biomarkers every single day. And primarily what you're looking for, especially um, prior to ovulation, you're looking for uh, what we call in FEM and a lot of different methods will use the same terminology a point of change. So a transition essentially from a quote unquote infertile time to a fertile time when your fertile window has opened, you're looking for that transition in your cervical mucus. And then if you are introducing other biomarkers like LH, you would be incorporating that testing for LH. And that's just a simple urine metabolite test. So literally fun stuff like peeing in a cup, dipping a stick, dipping a stick in test strip in, Um, and you're looking for a surge in hormones, and then you're continuing to observe your changes in transitions in cervical mucus and the quality and the quantity. And you're looking for what we call a peak day then, which would be this, um, this day of approximate day of ovulation. 
And that has very particular qualities to it in terms of the type of cervical mucus that you're seeing. And so you're charting all of this by the day. And then if you're incorporating basal body temperature, this is also something you would do daily um, to look for what we call a, a temp shift, which indicates a transition from one phase of the cycle, your follicular phase to your luteal phase. And all of these biomarkers that you chart with any method, also with them, all of them are pointing to hormonal activity and they're pointing to exactly what um, events are going on, whether that's, you know, ovulation is obviously the main event that you're looking for, but also things like BBT can indicate when you're about to start a period, for instance. Um, so the, that's what these biomarkers are pointing towards these different events and hormonal activity within the cycle. That is so helpful. Thank you for giving a breakdown and providing a more context too, with like, what does it look like meeting with a practitioner or instructor? Um, because I think that's helpful too, just to recognize that every instructor is going to deliver the information a little bit differently and, and schedule mm-hmm. a little differently. Um, which is just helpful because then you get to really tailor your experience and make sure that you're, um, with an instructor that you feel like you're a good fit with and that your meetings are going well together as you're learning and to be able to have the options of online in person, virtual group one-on-one, I think it's just so great because it really speaks to the needs for each woman and you can really tailor your health experience, which is just so cool. I just love that. Um, so a common yeah. question that I've gotten before is, you know, for someone who is engaged, um, would you, would you meet regularly, including your fiance and how often is it helpful to meet, especially if you're in that process of engagement and you're realizing I want to practice NFP, I want to start charting my cycle. What does that look like? Is there, you know, does FEM have recommendations or even, you know, even if it's not a FEM from your perspective as a FEM instructor and working with women, do you have recommendations for listeners um, who are wanting to figure out how far in advance should they start uh, meeting with an instructor? How often should they meet? Like what's helpful in that time when it's, it is high stress and your cycle can look a little different under the pressures of wedding planning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a huge advocate for women starting as soon as they possibly can. Um, and it's something that I would love to teach, you know, my daughter. So she is aware even before she starts her period, starts getting regular cycles, but obviously <laughs> if you've reached a certain age and a certain stage of life and you're not there, Um, that doesn't mean that it's too late, you know, and you can't jump in and be successful. Of course, anybody can with this information, as long as they're given the right support. Um, so I would say if you are someone who is, you know, seriously dating or you're engaged and you're preparing for marriage, ideally the least amount of time that you want to have in order to make this, you know, kind of low stress, um, and a fairly easy transition, would be six months. Um, but really in order to see cycle patterns and in order to, um, be somewhat confident, if you have pretty regular cycles, three months is what you're going to need a minimum of. So six months, if you want things to be a little bit less stressful, you know, you're not right around the corner from your wedding, but it is coming up, but definitely, definitely at least three cycles in order to see actual cycle patterns and to establish a little bit of confidence. Um, but if you're somebody who is, you know, even if you're single and, you know, you think that this is something you want to use obviously to chart for health, or you want to use this eventually to um, plan your family with NFP, absolutely jump on board right away because the more data that you have and the more experience that you have charting, the more confident you are going to be. And you're going to be able to determine especially as you go, go through a stressful time, like planning a wedding, you're going to be able to determine if what you're seeing, if there are shifts in your cycle pattern, if that's just due to stress, for instance, or if it's something that maybe needs to be addressed, you know, with some medical management, it's just going to give you so much more insight into what your normal is. And you'll be able to apply that data to your goals in a much less stressful way, a much, much less um, haphazard way because you'll have those patterns and you'll have that um, confidence built up from months and months of charting your cycles. This is so helpful. Thank you for just really getting into the nuances of it. And, and I think what you had said, I want to reiterate, like having women start as soon as possible is amazing. And there might Mm -hmm. be someone listening who's like, uh, I'm just hearing about this for the first time. (laughs) And there's no (laughs) shame in that. And that's actually a lot of women's stories. I think our, our hope and desire, I know for a lot of 
us in this space, you know, wanting to see women and daughters and, and young women, like getting this information so much sooner than we did to really be able to make smart choices for our health and be informed. Like you had mentioned with informed consent is so important and you can't make a good informed decision if you don't have all the information available to you. And so this is such a huge part of that. Um, so you, you know, we're touching on the importance of doing this, whether you're single, engaged, married, which is so good. I want to jump into um, postpartum and nursing and what that looks like in using them. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on my second postpartum period of charting. Um, and I still, full disclosure, I am just under a year postpartum and still have not seen a return of fertility. And this is not unusual for me. My, with my first po- postpartum experience, I didn't see a return of fertility until I was 14 months with my daughter. Um, so now I am just over 11 months with my son and still don't have a return of fertility and I'm still not cycling. Um, and it's been really interesting to me just to see the differences in these two um, experiences. So I will tell people that I love them. I think it's an amazing method, but I also think that it's not a great method for postpartum. And that's even somebody who has used it um, and used it with success because depending on your cycle patterns, it can be really challenging based on the simplicity of how they chart cervical mucus. So it's a standardized way that they chart cervical mucus and they have just a few different categories Um, And if you're somebody who sees continuous mucus postpartum, it can be a really tricky method because it's a newer method and they don't have an established, um, an established way of coming up with a very individualized basic infertile pattern, for instance. So there are other methods like Billings and Creighton that have a heavy focus on cervical mucus, and they have a little bit of an easier time coming up with this individualized basic infertile pattern that's going to help you determine, you know, what is actually fertile mucus and um, something that really needs to be be thought of as fertile and charted as fertile versus what, you know, might appear to be fertile mucus, but is really just kind of a standard uh, continuous mucus pattern in this particular time frame of postpartum. Because when your hormones are not what they typically are in, you know, regular cycles, your postpartum hormones are still influencing your cervix and influencing your cervical mucus and your patterns change frequently. And so that can make things very difficult and very tricky. Um, and that makes them kind of a challenging method to use. Now, that being said, I've used it successfully And my first postpartum experience was absolutely very tricky. Um, I had a pretty continuous mucus pattern after my daughter, but we navigated that and were able to use it and then uh, conceived my son when she was a little over two. So I'd been using FEM for a year and some successfully after I had a return of regular cycles. And now at this point with my son, things are a little bit different because my mucus pattern has been very different from my first experience. And so it's been a lot easier actually using them this time around. But since you don't know until you're really in the weeds of what your postpartum patterns are going to look like, it's hard to say if it will work or not. You know, it's hard to say what method is going to be the best fit. And postpartum is just one of those times, especially if it's your first go around that you really have no idea what to expect everything is different for every woman. And even as I said, like my experience has been different with, you know, two postpartum experiences. Um, so you can't say for sure that one method is going to be an excellent fit while another one is not going to work. But, you know, that being said, I think that there are some methods that most, the majority of women find they have success with postpartum that are less stressful across the board. And typically those methods are like Billings and Marquette can be a really good fit as well, but you just, you have to experiment. I mean, if FEM is a method that you have learned and you've had success with it prior to having a baby and being in this postpartum time period, it might be a great fit for you. And you might be able to navigate it, especially if you have um, support from an instructor. But if you feel like, you know, it's not working and you're really stressed out by your observations, it would be a great opportunity then to, you know, 
kind of ask around and ask for a referral and see what might work out better for you in this particular situation. This is so helpful. Thank you, Marie. And thank you for sharing your own experiences too, because I think that's really helpful to give some context to, um, I think, you know, a lot of times hearing the stats and hearing what works, what doesn't and the protocols, um, because like you said, every woman is so different and her response postpartum, her body and how it's healing and the return of fertility is so unique to each person. And it's so unique after each baby too, that it's, it's right. really about working with an instructor, you know, learning the method and making sure you understand the rules and protocols, but also having that support person outside of your spouse to be able to navigate those conversations or the confusion or the question so that you are feeling comfortable in the process of charting and working with your method. Because I think that is often where, regardless, regardless of your postpartum or not, where a lot of, um, confusion or even embarrassment comes in when it's like, man, I'm still not understanding my method. I did really good with these charting, but then I forgot this rule or this protocol. And that's a very normal thing. We're human and we're learning something that's, um, that's something that, you know, we weren't taught as little girls. We weren't taught at a, at, in school or by our parents necessarily, maybe you were, and that's amazing in such a way that it really allows you to be steeped in this knowledge and information that it feels natural. I mean, that would be the desire and the goal, I think, for so many of us to see that as we move forward for women. But as of now, we're all learning. We're in the trenches. We're trying to figure it out. And that is why an instructor is so helpful to be able to have someone that you can reach out to at any time when you have questions. And it's very normal to have questions and it's very normal to reach out. And that's true even for individuals who are instructors as well. It's not, it's, yes. it's a very normal thing. And so I just... I hope those listening know that and know that um, if, if there's ever a question, ask it. It's so good to ask and learn so that you are confident in your experience of charting. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, if you're somebody, for instance, who is just learning about this postpartum or you're coming off of the pill, you know, you're in one of those transitional periods that is tricky. It is so normal to feel not only overwhelmed, but also to be really confused by what you're seeing because those patterns, like there is not a standard for postpartum patterns. There is not a standard for coming off of hormonal birth control. It's not something that you can really say, look, this is what we expect to see. And this is going to be what your transition time looks like. This is what your, your cervical mucus patterns are going to look like. It's all over the board. And it's very dependent on, you know, your health, your genetics, like so many different things. So you can't, <laughs> don't freak out if you're trying to learn this information and you're in one of those transitional periods and you're just so overwhelmed. Like that is really the time that you need to find support because it is not something that you want to navigate on your own. And it's not worth trying to navigate on your own either. Yeah. So true. It's, it really isn't. It's so helpful to have someone to work with and it's so good. And that leads into my next question. What does the training look like of a femme instructor? So for individuals to better understand your background and training. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so they have, I think, taken everything online at this point with all the COVID craziness. So they used to do um, the intensive weekend where essentially you would have two full days of training and you'd be going through a lot of content in person and then you transition to everything online. So they have um, eight modules, I believe, that you're going through. And it's about, most people take um, like six to eight months for training, some up to about a year's worth of training. Cause it's kind of on your own pace. Um, there is a timeline that they suggest that you follow, but it's a little bit flexible. Um, and they're understanding if you get behind for instance, but they have, as I said, these eight modules that you're going through and you have to go through, uh, the module content, and then you have homework that you are, um, sending in and quizzes and tests as well. And then on top of that, you have five practice clients that you have to take on. And ideally they would see people, you would see people that have some variety. So not necessarily everybody who is in um, like a regular cycle, for instance, you might be seeing a postpartum client if you have that opportunity, or you might be seeing somebody who's coming off the pill. They definitely encourage you to, you know, seek out people that are in unique situations and then kind of bounce off, you know, any questions that you have from some of their teaching the training staff. Um, but you're going through three months worth, at least three months worth of cycle data, because that's as much as you need 
the minimum that you need in order to see cycle patterns. So you have these five practice clients, you're taking, you know, going through all of their health history, you're going through their at least three months worth of cycle data, and you're analyzing those. And you're essentially sending in case studies on these different clients and sharing, you know, your opinion of what you're seeing, whether it's normal. And you've, you've gone through all of the teaching as well with these clients, obviously. So you're acting as if you've taken them on, given them all the information that they need in order to chart successfully, whether that's charting for health alone or charting for health and family planning, um, and then analyzing all of, the, all of the cycle data that they send to you and their charts and sending that into the FEM team. And so it's this compilation of the modules, the homework, the quizzes and tests, these um, case studies that you're doing with clients, and then a final exam as well. That's awesome. And so involved too. So, so I think for listeners, you know, they have a better understanding of what their instructor is going through and how they're being trained, because I think that's a really helpful aspect too, especially if you're just learning fertility awareness or hearing about it, I think there's a lot of misinformation that comes out. And so it's really helpful to better understand through each method, you know, what does that training look like? What does the background of an instructor look like? So you know that you're in good hands and you're working with someone who is working on their expertise and does have a support network as well to be able to work with and um, to be able to help get answers for questions or weird cycle patterns or something that is just not really making sense so that it's not just like your instructor's off on their own and they're going to do the best they can. Like they have a network of support too, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. We have that with FEM. We have um, like a a teaching portal. We can share any questions that we have and the staff with the organization is really helpful as well. Just send them an email if you need to connect and have any questions. So there is a lot of that support within the organization. That's so great. So how can a woman find a practitioner? Does FEM offer a database or what does that look like to be able to find someone? And I should say some methods say practitioner, FEM uses instructor, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they do have a database. If you just go on their website, it's femhealth.org. So F E M M health.org. If you go to their website, they will have a database for both instructors and then also anybody trained in their medical management. So you can go and do, you know, a keyword search for your area, or you can just browse through the entire list. I mean, at this point, I think there should be a couple hundred people, maybe more on there. Um, I, was one of their first instructors, which is kind of crazy to think about (laughs) at this point. It's like been nearly, gosh, eight years, um, I think. So I was, I have been, besides a number of the people that are in their organization, I am one of their older instructors and I have some classes available through their website. And I think one or two other instructors also have classes posted through their website. So you can just go through the website. Typically you'll see options. Um, but then, and usually you'll be able to get a free intro as well through the website. I have a free intro available through my own website, luminahealthservices.com. Um, but then if you know an instructor, you can also just reach out to them. Obviously, if you know a femme instructor and you're interested in learning through this particular person, you can of course reach out to them individually and, you know, ask them what their rates are and how you go about getting instruction, um, through them. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so helpful too, just to have a database. I know that's a huge question I get. Where do I go? What do I do? And, and every method works a little bit differently, but it's great that FEM has everything on their website like that. Um, Do you know, does insurance cover the cost of working with a FEM instructor or covering any of the costs for, for instruction? So I think that there is a workaround and I'm not super well-versed in all of insurance policies and everything, but I believe that there is a code people can use and it just essentially um, covers like preventative women's health services. So I think that you can use teaching, like uh, learning to chart as that type of like preventative women's health. Um, But I don't know if it applies to all insurance or, um, you know, I'm not sure if there's a specific workaround depending on the insurance company that you use or your plan or what have you. But I think it's worth asking, you know, it's something that you can certainly call up your insurance company, your insurance provider, um, or maybe, you know, depending on where you work, you might be able to ask somebody there HR, for instance, or um, see if they have some answers as to how you might be able to get that covered. But yeah, I believe preventative women's health would have a code for it. 
That's so helpful. Thank you for sharing that. And for those who now have information to be able to look at that, because insurance is a wild card. It really depends and it yeah. depends on how things are coded, but it never hurts to ask. And I always encourage women to do that. And I do this for myself too. just ask away and see. And I know for some methods too, depending on if you're buying test strips, things like that, they can be FSA, HSA applicable. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I think that might also, that might also be the same for teaching as well. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure women have had success using that. Awesome. Okay. That's great. So things to consider when picking femme, what questions do you recommend a woman ask herself and look at to figure out if this is a good fit for a woman couple's lifestyle, if they're choosing to use them? Yeah. Um, so I think it's a great method to start out number one, because it's very simple and it's easy to build additional biomarkers into your, you know, charting protocol. If you're somebody who wants to start pretty simple, you can start with just cervical mucus and you can slowly add in LH, BBT, all those things. So it's very straightforward and simplistic in that manner manner. And on top of that, I love it as a starting method because it has such a heavy focus on charting for health and what's normal, what's not. And I know a lot of other methods, while they might have a little bit of that content built in, there's not nearly the same emphasis as there is with a method like FEM, because that really is their goal is to empower women to understand their cycle as a vital sign of health. So I hugely encourage women, especially if they are, you know, single and especially if they think that there might be some issues that they are going to have to address, whether that's, you know, as simple as a hormone imbalance, if they're struggling with painful periods, if they might, you know, if they think that they might be dealing with something like PCOS or endometriosis, this is a great method to get into because it's going to help you uncover any of those um, issues. And then it's also going to help put you in touch with somebody who can actually read your charts and understand your data and really um, get into a specific program that's tailored for you and your needs treatment wise. So that's hugely helpful. And then if you're somebody who is, you know, wanting to use this for family planning, I think it can also be a great method but you want to start paying attention to your body and see if you're somebody who's dealing with a lot of continuous mucus patterns, for instance, that is often an indication that there's something amiss, not necessarily. Um, so once again, you could analyze that and just reach out to an instructor, a femme instructor and ask, you know, for kind of a quick intro or overview to see if it might be a good fit, because it could be something where you might need You might need a method that has a little bit more um, specific cervical mucus and more, um, like I said, FEM is very standardized in their approach, which is great and helpful, especially from like the healthcare aspect, but you might need something that is a little bit more flexible depending on what you're seeing. Um, So a method like Billings, for instance, is um, really typically a good alternative if that's, um, if you're dealing with a lot of continuous mucus and it's normal for you, um, and it's not necessarily an unhealthy pattern, but otherwise, yeah, women who are wanting to use this for family planning and they see that they have, you know, pretty regular cycles. It's a very easy method, very straightforward, um, and easy to incorporate and share information with your significant other. Awesome. This is so helpful. Thank you so much, Marie, for coming on, sharing more about your own experiences with FEM and journey to becoming an instructor and then getting into the specifics of how FEM works and how women can utilize it to help better understand their bodies and start charting their cycles, whether it's for overall health knowledge or for family planning or both. Hopefully it's both. It's awesome to have that as, as a both and. Uh, whether you're engaged, single or married, because it's just so helpful to understand how our bodies work and to be able to use this information to better inform our health choices and advocate for what we need. So thank you so much for being on a joy to have you on and chat with you today. Yes. Thank you, Bridget. I love coming on. I love sharing this information. I'm so glad we were able to make it work. Awesome. And I will be sure to share Marade's work in the show notes. So if you want to reach out to her, check out her courses that she's offering and see what she's up to. She is awesome to follow on social media and you need to get on her email list too. So I'll be sure to share that as well. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends and help expand the conversation around women's health. If you'd like to learn more about fertility awareness, visit www.managingyourfertility.com for more information, resources, guides, and so much more.